that can't see. We're gonna go to uh, I think 398 here. <coughs> he paid it. He did not. services in fine today and everything is fine so we just keep remembering him had to drain a lot of fluid out and so remember that and sister Sarah um, Aaron's wife she fell the other day and uh, cracked her hand now as far as I know it's a like a line crack or something within it you know and uh, you know it's not what you call a broken bone but it's a line in there which is really probably I guess in some respects worse but uh, 
she was doing fine the other day with it, but just keep her in your prayers. I know it'll be a lot of pain. And remember that. And also, let's see. Uh, yeah, Brother Claude Weisinger will be by here with us on the 29th of this month on Wednesday preaching for us and going towards Florida. Remember that. Remember the fellowship meeting will be on the third Saturday, uh, the March the 17th at 3.30. So remember that. I think that's all the announcements. Have I missed any? Uh, so let's just pray and then we'll go right into our scripture. Our precious Lord and our Savior, our Redeemer, our all in all, in Jesus is that wonderful name that we think about. We love you and we thank you, Father, and we ask you to just come on the scene in our hearts and lives because we believe here in the end time that truly we are there at that time to be able to understand. It would be a time to open and to let our eyes see, and we thank you. Then in that, we believe your word said that, Lord, you sent your word and healed us and delivered us from destruction. So we depend upon that. We believe you. We thank you for all things. Just come on the scene tonight and as we speak about you and seal up our lips, Lord, and don't let us say anything that would be wrong in any way, but let us just be honest with each and every one of us that we all, Lord, look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. We love you and we thank you and we commit it to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse, First Corinthians 11, verse 17. Now in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. See, in other words, they have a lot of problems. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be, be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you so it's not just that it might could happen right. it's necessary that it happens to prove those who can stay with the word and it will come out right. okay right. first peter 3 verse 15 said but sanctify the lord god in your <coughs> hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear you may be seated the lord that is blessing to the reading of the word. Now, we've been taking now for a few services, uh, trying to take some things that, you know, some of the believers in the message or the people believe, and we are ashamed to say a lot of times that there are so many doctrines that are among the people of the message, but uh, there's also uh, one truth about it. The scarecrow is always where the good corn is at, you know. So if you plant something in your garden and you got a bunch of old knotty weeds and things, you don't put the scarecrow there. You put it where the good stuff is at, you know. So that's the way it is. And like I told you, in reading that scripture, it's it's not just a point of happening. It is the fact that God wants to try you and I to see if we'll stay with the Word. All right. So it's a trial and a test and a doing to see if we will just abide in the word and go right on. All right. Now we've covered over a few, a couple of two or three services now, and we covered like two souls, two lords, um, Jesus not being God to the River Jordan. We covered the seven thunder virtue message, and then we got on to this last Sunday afternoon on. The point that they were saying that we don't have the Holy Ghost like they did in the book of Acts yeah. and uh, you know we've covered those things so if anybody hears that or interested in doing it you can go back and hear the tapes and connect on you know to to hear that right. but now let's, I've said this or tried to every time I think I've covered it that just because when I will announce a doctrinal thing uh, there are many, many different groups of people believing many different ways right. and uh, are all related to that. And uh, it's kind of like it was when we was in the Baptist church, not throwing off on them because I'm saying we're over here. You know, you, you had a lot of little fling-offs in the Baptist church. You had people that believed this and people that believed that and people that believed this and people that believed that. Right. All kind of doctors, Presbyterians, you had all kind of 
do it, Pentecostals and all, but they, they had like a one common gold ground or whatever to walk on, and that's why uh, we talk about those things. And I say this to you like I said before, that each one of these things that we've covered or will cover, uh, this is as far as I understand and have heard of the people, you know, especially preachers that I have listened to about these doctrines. And, you know, that's why I do it and say that I would agree or disagree with whatever it would be. All right. And I say also that there's many people who believe just parts of these doctrines and things, you know, just uh, just believe in, in parts of it or what it's bringing. But, you know, uh, it still is there. All right. Now, tonight we're going to talk about something that has been uh, we're around the message for quite a while and and uh, prevalent, I guess you would call it, or among a lot of what we would call the big ministers of the message, and they they fall their own line like this, and you know, and hearing some of them, you maybe have never heard, like I said, some of these doctrines maybe you've never heard because maybe you've not been out. Well, you're lucky, right. you know, <laughs> that you haven't heard these things, right. but. You know, I try to warn us because, you know, that we could be believing some of these things yep. and it not be right. right. Amen. Well, I want us to be right, right, no matter what, you know, or who is offended at what we say or what we believe. But just remember to you on the Internet and anyone listening to this tape, I'm talking to my church here. Right. If you want to listen and, and, and consider, that's fine but I am not your pastor. I only pastor the church here in Lula, and I'm responsible for the souls here. So then I just try to answer to the best that I can, as I said, as to some of the things that I've heard. But now, a lot of people believe that Brother Branham was the one that came to John on Patmos to bring him the revelation right. of these things. All right, and uh, you know, I, I certainly don't want to say anything contrary to some of the things, but I also want to be blunt about what I say. Amen. Because at least that way I can be helped. If I'm wrong, you can correct me. Uh, but see, a lot of people that said they believe John now, they're on Patmos. We'll get to it in a minute. And the angel, when John fell down to worship him, told him to worship him not. And, and and all he said I'm of their fellow brethren and the prophets and things and uh, they believe that that was actually Brother Branham that came there yep. and uh, the only uh, I'll try to give even quotes that shows these things as to what they use and what they believe but the one thing I want you to think about as we start this thought uh You'd say, well, well, we'll read where Brother Brown said it was a prophet. All right? All right, let's read that. We'll read a lot of things that said in the Bible. So let's read it. But then we must come down to a conclusion and be able to state, and that's why I read that scripture, you know, to be able to give a reason of the hope of, the, of, of what lies within you. So, see, I have a right to ask you, you know, what do you believe? as well as you have a right to ask me what I believe because you're supposed to be ready to give an answer of the reason of the hope that lies within you right. and all like that. And like I said, a lot of you may have never heard this thought, but it is prevalent among a lot of the, of the ministers of the message that speak about it. All right. But the one thing I want to, to emphasize <coughs> before we start See, I think that we we put the emphasis upon the one who came to John, uh -huh. you know, on Patmos. Now, we'll read this in a minute, but I'm just making my point. And, uh, you know, we put the emphasis upon who came to John. Right. Now, uh, all that's well and good, but... I've always thought that we were supposed to be 
our emphasis was to be placed upon who came to Brother Branham. Right. Man. Right. Not whether or not Brother Branham came to John, but who came to Brother Branham. Right. Right. You know, to bring us the revelation. That's right. All right. And, you know, I, I, how did the revelation get to, to Brother Branham to be able to take it to John? Right. You said, well, he's a prophet. No, that's, that's all right. So were a lot of in the Bible prophets, but they were not able to uh, bring forth only that that God had revealed unto them. Right. You agree? Right. Amen. And in doing that then, uh, see, are we concerned of who came to John or who came to Brother Branham? Right. And the main emphasis to me is should be put on what was brought. Right. You know, That's you right. know we, we put the emphasis on who done what. Well, uh, you know, I, I've never thought any of the prophets wanted to take any glory or honor. I thought they all wanted to give their honor and glory to the Lord himself. All right, see, and maybe you say, well, Brother Branham, you know, Brother Branham said this and that. I agree with you. We're going to read it because I, I don't mind reading it to you. But I'm just asking you the question, are we putting our emphasis upon who came to who? You know, well, is that going to change us? If we know that that was Brother Branham that come to John on Patmos. No. Would that change us? The, I, I want to know what was took to John. Right. Yep. Amen. I, I want to know what John got. All right, there you go. Amen. All right. Because mm -hmm. John then wrote what he got. Right. 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 See, now he wrote down what he got. He penned it. Brother Brown calls him in the church age book a scribe. John was the scribe, not the author of the book of Revelation. Amen. The author is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll get down to that. But I'm just laying a point to you. Then my emphasis, my point is upon whatever came to John by whoever brought it to John would be be able to come back to me to where I can get the revelation. Right. Amen. Right. And uh, I, I want to put another point right here. And if I was you, I'd jot this down. And I'm not against anybody yeah. that believes anything. I just try to say what I believe and let it go. But I just ask simple questions. To me, they're simple. That's because that's my simplicity of thinking. <coughs> Even if it was true. That John came, as I said, uh, Brother Ram came to John on Patmos. Now, that was only the writing of the book. Right. Now, listen to it. You would have to agree because that's what it says. Right. Yeah. All right, then, if we don't get the revelation, of what is written in the book, then we don't have it. Right. 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 Now, I'll quote this again in a minute. No man can reveal anything to you or me. That's right. The Holy Ghost, Brother Brown, Christ the Mystery, God reveal. We'll get to it in a minute. Said the Holy Ghost is the only revealer of the Word. That's right. <laughs> right. right. Now, so if it was Brother Branham, it came to John and told him these things. That's only the writing of the book. Right. Mm -hmm. right. That's right. You, you get me? Yeah. Come on. Right there in black and white, that's the writing of the book. Man, right. That's right. But see, we've got to know what's revealed. Right. That's right. The book has got to be revealed. Yeah. Right. So then. We've got to be able to get it from the book. Right, right. After the book is written, yep. sealed up, and finished until the end time. See, because John was the last one writing, 1895 96, writing the book of Revelation. Right. Right. All right. 
So if he was the finality or the finish or the writing of the book, well then what would it matter if who came to John to bring him the, book, the, bit, the ability to write the book? I want to know who can take the book and God can come down into his hands and unfold the book unto me. Right. Amen. And be able then to let me see what the book says. That's right. And, and we know for a certainty that we believe Brother Branham done that. That's right. Amen. Right? Right. Amen. right. That he was the one to come to break because he's the finality of the prophets. Right. Well, I agree with that 100%. See? So then, what I want to do is find out what Brother Branham, see, would bring to you and I. Right. But still, even though we can hold the books, I don't have one out here with me as a spoken word book, but I have a lot of quotes here. Uh, even though we could have that, yep. does that mean we understand? Come on. No, it's going to take the Holy Spirit. Amen. To reveal right. what is said. Right. All right. See, then that way we're not concerned with who's bringing who to what. Right. No. I'm not. That's right. My concern is is to be able to let the Holy Spirit take what has been brought and let it be spoken to me by revelation. Right. That's it. All right. Because only the revelation will do me any good. Right. All right. And, and I talked with, with one brother personally about this. That I know his pastor believed it and all. But I just told a brother, I said, I can't see that. I'm just honest. I can't see what y'all are talking about. And I'll get on into it in a minute on the emphasis part of it. But, you know. Are you you getting a point now out there? Some people on the internet will be listening. What's the most important? Who came to John? Or what was written by John yeah. from ever who came to him? And then Brother Branham would be the one that would come to bring to us in this day what was written back there by whoever delivered or whatever took place. That's right. See, then that puts the emphasis right back up on the prophet's message, yeah. right? Amen. And bringing it down to a, a point then that we should look at it and see that the most important thing is to see the revelation. Right. Yeah. Not to see who brought what. Right. Because this Bible is not the revelation of Brother Brown. Right. 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 No more than John was the even John was not the author of the prophet said. Right. That's right. He said he was the scribe. Right. Yep. You know what a scribe does? Right. He records what he sees right. or heard or whatever. So John recorded it all the way through. Oh, yeah. And as he was recording it, he was bringing it down to you and I. Amen. Now, as I said, a lot of emphasis is placed upon that and people believe that Brother Brown came to John on Patmos because of him being the prophet. All right. There is another side of the view that I would hold closer to, but you notice I said hold closer to. I wouldn't say agree with it 100%. But some people believe that that John was translated over into this day and saw Brother Branham and the opening of the seals and went back and wrote. You know, he was translated over into and brought over. But now, the reason I don't go wholly with that is one point too, that it would put too much emphasis upon the transmitting and the doings of who is what and who's coming to who, instead of being the emphasis upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, that's right. And he is revealing to you and I Amen. the word of God. Amen. All right. Now, so let's just take some things that has been said and and let's just see what Brother Randall had to say about this point here of the Isle of Patmos. Go ahead, brothers, pull up number one. It, uh, I don't know where it's warm out there or not, but it is up here. So if you could at least turn the fan on and get it a little 
a little air stirring. <clears throat> now look, this is on the this is on the the revelation of Jesus Christ, the series Brother Branham preached of the church ages. You know, preaching 1960, 1204, the morning service, paragraph 113. And we'll read this scripture in just a minute to tie together with it and, and see what we're talking about. Then we find out that when John started to worship the angel, the angel said, see that you do it not. <coughs> Revelation 22, I believe it is, and he said, for I am of thy fellow servants and of the prophets. Now watch it. It might have been Elijah. Listen. It might have been one of the prophets. John was an apostle. But this prophet was sent. And John, being an apostle, looked at the nature of the rest of his epistle. All right, let's go over there and read this that he's talking about, Revelation 22, 9. And we'll just start from there so that we'll have the, the point of it. 22, we'll start 8 verse, I guess. Because in a minute I want to drop all the way back up, come all the way down. Verse 8 says, And I, John, saw these things and heard them, and when I had heard them, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. And he saith unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. All right. Now, Brother Branham said it could have been Elijah. Or could have been one of the prophets that come to John on Patmos. Okay. Now let's go on over. And let's get the next one. This is the one everybody likes to use, which is taken from the paragraph 59 of, excuse me, paragraph 201, basically over to 209 of the fifth seal, 63, 322. And watch what he said. He said, have you caught anything? I just wondered if you was. Yes, you see, yes, sir, I might not have to tell you then Sunday. Notice, notice, wonderful now, notice now. And then according to the, the time that God was going to deliver the Andalusian world, he sent the eagle. And the time he was going to deliver Israel, sent the eagle. Do you believe that the time even on John, on, do you believe that the time even on John, on the Isle of Patmos, this message was so perfect that he couldn't trust it with an angel. Okay, now watch you. You know an angel is a messenger. Right. But do you know the messenger was a prophet? Come on. You believe that? Let's prove it. Revelation 22. Let's see if it was an eagle. See, he was, sure he was an angel. He was a messenger. But it was a prophet that revealed this whole book of Revelations to him. Come on. Now, it was a prophet that revealed it. Come on. Amen. Now, see, then we take what they are reading and saying, well, now, you know, in the days of the Andalusian, he didn't send it by an angel, he sent it by an eagle. Alright. Now, Brother Branham was the seventh church age messenger. That's right. He was the seventh angel. Right. You agree? Amen. Alright. So now you see where it is laying down what Brother Branham is saying. You see, it was an eagle. Sure, he was an angel, he was a messenger, but he was a prophet that revealed the book. So now you're dealing with an eagle and an angel. Alright? Now, was Brother Branham the son of man? He said he wasn't. He said he was a son of man. We'll get to that in just a minute. Was Brother Branham the prophet? Or was he one of the prophets? Right. Now the 
only the prophet I know to be in order of understanding is the Lord Jesus Christ in a prophetic ministry. All right. See, then that way you'll look back and see why Brother Branham would say that if you don't see Christ in every verse, go back and read it again. He said, because you've missed it. See, all of those prophets was Christ to the people. And even in the book of Acts, you'll find that Jesus was the one that spoke to John, I mean to, to Moses, at the burning bush. Because he said it. He said he was in the burning bush. All right. See, then not Jesus the flesh. Right. Because Jesus the flesh wasn't in the burning bush. Right. But remember how I always tell you, when I say Jesus Christ, I don't mean Jesus the flesh. I'm not emphasizing the flesh none whatsoever when I say Jesus Christ. I'm saying Christ. And saying that Jesus is the only name of God. Amen. You remember that? That's right. All right. And Jesus being the only name of God, so then when I say Jesus Christ, I mean Almighty God. Amen. Right. Who was Melchizedek? Almighty God. Right. Amen. But he was in a form, right? That's right. Okay. So now that's where we're going to go through this and look at it. So we read there that Brother Rand would say, sure, said, he's, a, he's an eagle. He's a prophet. But now, did Brother Branham ask you, see, the best way to answer a question is to ask a question. <laughs> uh, okay. And uh, I ask you a simple question. Do you believe that Brother Branham, in human flesh, corporal body, human flesh, ever what you want to use the word for, terminologies of what you want to use, do you believe Brother Branham come to John on Patmos, in a physical body. No. If you do, you've totally got pre-existence in your understanding. Right. All right? Jesus, the flesh man, never came to Melchizedek. Right. right. But the Christ did. Right. Man. The Christ came to Melchizedek, or was Melchizedek. That's what he was. Right. All right? See, now, think those things over. I wrote it like this to, my, this to you. I do not believe that Brother Branham in any earthly form could come to John on Patmos. That would be pre-existence of a human form. All right, so we would annihilate the fact that it could be a corporal, physical, mortal contact of any form. Right. We would have to annihilate that out of our thinking. So we remove that. Now, I know it ain't going to change nobody out there believing, and if you believe it, it ain't going to change you. But I'm just, I just preach what I believe, okay? It's up to God to reveal it to you or anybody else. It ain't going to change nobody because they're going to say, Brother David, don't even understand. Well, I agree. I don't understand that, you know. But maybe the Lord does. And, uh, but I, I just try to stir up your curiosity. And, hey, and I, I know the Scriptures, too. A little bit, you know, not all of them, but Paul says questions gender strife. See? That's scripture. Now was Brother Branham contrary to that when he said questions made a strong church? No. <laughs> what was Paul talking about about questions? Right. You think Paul didn't want questions? How could have Ananias told him he didn't know what he was talking about when he was standing there and said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed it if Ananias hadn't asked questions? Right. And Brother Randall says questions makes a strong church. Right. Amen. See, so now, what's being said? Yeah. See, Paul didn't like endless genealogies right. and things. But there's a truth to genealogies. And lineages. So decide for yourself. See, at least I'll try to tell you what I believe. What? Where most people are just, I don't know. Yeah. 
I'm not going to say nothing because I don't know. Well, I just go ahead and open my mouth and remove all that. So that, that way you can decide what I believe and then you can make up your mind. I believe that Brother Branham was not the prophet. Right, that's right. He was a prophet. Amen. All right. Now, I don't believe it was a prophet. Now, listen. I don't believe that it was a prophet. Now, do you understand the emphasis? Brother Branham was the, was not the prophet. He was a prophet. Brother Branham was not the son of man. He was a son of man. That the son of man come to. All right. So then I do not believe that a prophet, a prophet, small, little one, was the one that come to John on Patmos. I believe that was the prophet. Amen. Okay. Brother Branham was not the prophet. He was a prophet. That the prophet the Lord Jesus Christ came to. Brother Branham was not the son of man. Right. We'll read one of these in just a moment. He was a son of man that the son of man came to. Amen. Now, to emphasize my point, and you'll, if I don't get it in, remember this later. Why would a man like John the Baptist, when we know that he was in the spirit and the power of Elias, right? Or Elijah. We know that he was Elijah number three, right? Right. You had Elijah, Elisha with a double portion, John the Baptist coming to be to recognized as, as uh, Isaiah 42 and, and the one crying in the wilderness and different things. And Brother Branham would be number four, right? right. And then the, one of the two witnesses, the Elijah right. to the Jews is number five. All right. Now, catch the emphasis. John, are you that prophet? Now there's one or two things goes there. John, are you God? That prophet. Uh-uh. Now John, are you Elijah? He says, huh? That's right. No. I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. That's right. Now, if that is said, John, are you part of that ministry of Elijah? Amen. This comes five times in the Bible. Right. John would have said, yep, I kind of believe I am one of them. Because my ministry would relate to it. All right. But yet he denies it. So they say, John, okay, who are you? He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Isaiah 42, I think it is. Which identified him to be the Elijah ministry of that day. You agree? Amen. All right. But he was not Elijah. He was not Elisha. He was not the Elijah to the Gentiles in the last days. And he, he was not the Elijah to be the number fifth coming. Right. Because if he said, yes, I am Elijah, that would have covered the whole thing. Right. But yet he identified himself in the Scripture. That's right. And they said, Brother Ram, are you that Elijah? He said, now, I ain't never said that. But a lot of people say that about him. He said, Brother Ram, identify yourself. He said, okay, Malachi 4. Is my identification. Luke 17 30 is my identification. It would identify the Gentile coming of the spirit of Elijah to be according to Malachi 4 and Luke 17 30 and Revelation 10 7. All right. All right. So you'll see the emphasis in a minute when we come back to it. But who was Elijah? The spirit. Who is the spirit in, in Elisha? Who was the spirit in John the Baptist? Who is the spirit that was in Brother Random? Who is the
the spirit that would be in the one of the two witnesses that goes to Israel. It would be, as we'll read in a minute, it would be the spirit of prophecy. True? Right. Amen. It would be the Christ. The prophet. Not a prophet. Right. See, each one of them couldn't identify as being all of it. Right. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Elijah couldn't be all of it. Elisha couldn't be all of it. Yeah. Brother Brown couldn't be all of it. Nope. Right. John the Baptist couldn't be all of it. Right. Neither can the one coming over the end be all of it. Right. It can only be the portion for the hour that he was living. Amen. But the prophet is the one that was in all of them. Right. Right. Amen. And that the prophet, now listen, because we're going to quote this in a minute and we're going to get to something he said. The prophet is not Jesus. Right. Amen. Now, you're going to catch that one, so hold on to it. See, Jesus was Almighty God. Right. Amen. And Brother Branham, they asked him, said, was, why wouldn't Jesus accept worship? He said, that wasn't Jesus. On Patmos. He said, that wasn't Jesus. Hmm? Brother Branham was so careful in his answers until he laid it perfectly in order. Because that was not Jesus. The prophet is the prophetic ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. But Jesus is a flesh. Right. And Jesus is the name of God. So you've got to leave it that that prophet could be yep. just exactly like we went through the, the Godhead. Brother Brown said God stepped over in another form and became the Son Amen. to create the world. See, not another God. Amen. The same God in another form. Amen. So the prophet that was in Elijah, Elisha, John the Baptist, Brother Branham would be in the end time would be the prophet. Because he's the God, God of all the prophets is the Lord Jesus Christ. Alright, now watch. Let's just start reading. We'll read a few of these things that I've already quoted. Go ahead, brother. The number mm, four. Number four, let's read that. No, wait a minute, we gotta back up. We gotta back up to number we gotta back up to number three. I don't want to get this one in our word that somebody wouldn't come along and say, wait a minute now, this, that, or the other. Let's get it and lay it in there. Let you make your own decision. This is paragraph fifty nine, questions and answers, uh, book number four, which you'll find this eleven seventy five in your um, seal book. C-O-D book. I mean, seal D book, excuse me. 1175. Right. All right. 64, 834, which is question and answer. Book 4, paragraph 59. And see, they're asking a question. Dear, dear brother, would Jesus not accept worship in Revelation by John when he fell to? Why would not Jesus receive worship in Revelation by John when, when he allowed worship before? Would not Jesus receive the worship in you know why would he do it when he was he allowed worship before him why wouldn't jesus receive worship when john wanted to worship him right. now look what he says my dear brother or sister whoever it is it was not jesus that would not receive worship in revelations 22 8. that's the scripture we read you'll read it was the prophet angel who would not receive worship. When John fell down to worship the angel that had showed him these things, he said, See that you do it not, for I am of thy fellow brethren, 
I am one of the prophets. See, see. I am thy fellow brethren, thy fellow servant, one of the prophets. Give worship to God. It wasn't Jesus didn't accept it. It was the prophet wouldn't accept it. Okay. Now, but you're going to have to go back and read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. Because surely you've heard me say this statement. There was times in Jesus' life that he would not accept worship. You agree? Right, right. So the Bible says yep. he wouldn't let him worship him. Yep. That was when he was alive. But then there was times he didn't worship and he'd accept it. Amen. Why? Because he knew what they were doing. Right. One of them was looking at the flesh, the other one was looking to the God in the flesh. Right, amen. Right. One was wanting to worship God in the flesh, he wouldn't allow that. Right. But the other was trying to worship the flesh and he refused to accept it in the flesh. So now it wasn't Jesus that called to John on Patmos. No, I don't agree. I don't I don't believe it was Jesus. I believe it was the prophetic ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Which would be, as I asked the brother, the simple question. I said, why do you want it to be one man? One prophet. Why not make it the prophet? Amen. Which would cover every prophet in the Bible. The prophet is Moses, Abraham. Name of all the prophets. Right. That's the prophet which was the spirit of prophecy in a man yep. and that spirit of prophecy in a man could have received worship but would not allow it because nope. none of those prophets would allow worship of them alright I followed me, we're going on a little further Brother Donnie said he was listening I forgot how many times on one tape but I priest since 82 or 83 so maybe you don't want to listen to this one over and over a few times because I'll try to say what I can the best that I can but then you know if you misunderstand what I'm saying because your computer went you know over on another track right now and you're, you're running backwards and forth on track two and I'm on track one then it all gets muddled up and you don't understand what I'm trying to say all right but look at the next one look at number four now Let's just get down to it. This is, we quoted it, but we'll put it on the this tape. This is from Christ the Mystery of God Revealed, paragraph 318, 1963, 728. And notice, the Holy Ghost is the only revealer of the divine revelation of Christ. There is no school can do it, no scholar can do it, no man. How well educated, how godly, or anything else, there is no man can do it. No man can reveal anything to you. Right, right. Jesus said, quote, Brother Branham, right, do you need this quote? Jesus said, my own life did not reveal that unto thee. But my Father, when, G when Peter said, thou art the Christ, Matthew 13, 16, or 16, 13, that which way it goes, when he said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, he said, flesh and blood didn't reveal it. Brother Branham said, my own life did not reveal that to him to thee. That's what I asked the question one ago, see. Even if it was Brother Branham that went to John on Patmos, that is only the writing of the book. Right. Yep. See, then you've got to get something coming from there to Brother Branham. Right. Back here on earth. So let him preach it to us. Right. And then the Holy Ghost can reveal it. Because the Holy Ghost couldn't reveal it while it was written in the book. Nope. Come on, show me did. Nope. And you know I'm right. The Holy Ghost couldn't reveal the book of Revelation only in partial things. Right. Until this prophet came. Right. Right? right? Amen. Amen. See, because light had not shined in on you. Remember the pyramid and the things of the dreams and the cutting the top off and looking down in and all of that's tied in together? <clears throat> right. 
Because Brother Ram can't reveal anything. Nope. Right. That's right. Jesus said, My own life didn't reveal that unto thee, Peter. But my Father which is in heaven revealed it. Right. Amen. Right. So I think our emphasis is placed upon the wrong thing. Amen. Even if we could prove that Brother Ram come to John on Patmos, that's just the writing of the book. I hope you're following me. Right. That would seal it up and we couldn't get it. What? I want to know who come to Brother Brown. Yeah. He said, well, I know that. So do I. Same, one. Same way it went to John, come to Brother Brown on out down over here in Tucson, Arizona, and told him, said, go back home. Right. Didn't tell him what the seals were. Right. Come on, show me he did. Go back home, it'll be revealed to you what they play. He comes back. He said, I, on the breach and the God in simplicity, he said, I do not know what that first seal is. That's what he said. Right. He said, yes, he did. Well, you make him a liar, so go ahead. He said he didn't know. He preached the first seal. He said, I do not know what the second seal is. He said, I'm waiting on him. Amen. Amen. Right. Now throughout the seal book, study it. Brother Ram was waiting on somebody. Right. Amen. Surely when he gets down to the end, he said, I wish somebody would have caught what's been going on this week. Right. He said, it's not been the angels of the Lord. It's not been nothing in me. He said, it's been the angels of the Lord. Amen. Bringing me back, he said, here for this tonight. Okay. Let's seal these up by making sure people on the internet can read them. Go to number five. Questions and answers, book two, 1964. Some say Brother Brown is the son of man. I thought the pillar of fire was the son of man. Am I mistaken? Well, that's a good question. Very good. But I am not the son of man, but a son of man. There's quite a difference. Jesus Christ was the son of man. Son of God, son of man, son of David. He said the question was there and all the things. He said, I am not the, the anointed son of man. I don't claim to be his prophet. Many times I said it when I didn't think I said it and catch myself on the tape. Then he goes explain that the prophet is a New Testament preacher. Well, I, you know, he's, he's all right. He's, he's explaining what's going on. But he's not the son of man. Right. Jesus was the son of man. But Jesus was the Word made flesh, which was God in human flesh. Right. The yeah. Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Right. Amen. Not just Jesus, a man. Right. He was the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. right. He was God Almighty in human flesh. Right. Right. Come on. Look at the next one. This is off anointed once the end time. 1965, 725, paragraph 258. And in the very day that the Son of Man is revealed, Revelation 10, 1 through 7, read it when you get home. The seventh angel's message, opening the seals. What is it? Not the angel is the Son of Man, but the messenger is revealing the Son of Man. Amen. Did you get it? Can you get it separated now? That's where it seems to be so hard for you, you see. Not the Son of Man himself, but the seventh angel. The seventh messenger is revealing to the public the Son of Man because it's left the shut. It can't organize. It's the grain. It's a, itself again. All right. He said, well, 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 it says it, that the Son of Man was revealing. Who is the Son of Man? We just established, Brother Brown said, he was not the Son of Man. So there was a seventh church age messenger there was an angel. Right. Sure. But he was born a prophet. But being born a prophet didn't make him the son of man. Right. Yeah. It didn't come out. <laughs> Watch him as we go to the next one, paragraph 269 of the anointing one. I wasn't the one that appeared down on the river. I was only standing there when he appeared. Yep. I'm not the one that performs these things and foretells these things and happens as perfect they are 
things that happen as perfect as they are. I'm on. I'm only one that's near when he does it. I was only a voice that he used to say it. It wasn't what I knew. It's what I just surrendered myself to. That he spoke through. It isn't me. It wasn't the seventh angel. Oh no. It was the manifestation of the Son of Man. It wasn't the angel, his message. It was a mystery that God unfolded. It's not a man, it's God. The angel was not the Son of Man. He was a messenger from the Son of Man. The Son of Man is Christ. What is he? The Son of Man is Christ. He is the one that you're feeding on. You're not feeding on a man. A man, his words will fail. But you're feeding on the unfailing body word of the Son of Man. Now, Brother Branham was not what we were feeding on. He's the one that God used. That's as plain as what he says. Right, right. But he used him to bring us the message of what this prophet took to John on Patmos. Right. Amen. See, a lot of people think that what happened was it was Brother Brown's... Now, this is another thought that goes in. They think that Brother Brown's theophany was translated over into and saw these things. Yeah. Well, you take over what thought you want to. I'm not against any of it. I'm not against anybody and their beliefs. You believe what you want to, you have a right to. But what I'm trying to tell you, my emphasis is upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because he's the only revealer of the word. Right. Amen. And if this was Brother Brown that come to John on Patmos, I still want to know what the who told him something on Patmos. Right. Because right. what he told John was just the writing of the book. I hope you catch that. Right. No matter what you think about who come to what. Right. That was the writing of the book. Amen. Right. This is in the day of the revealing of the book. Amen. See, that's what everybody thinks. They think that, that Brother Brown in some theosophy form went there and saw this and come back. Why not just lay down as simple as what he said? He said, I don't know what those seals are. That's right. That's right. what he said. Read it. Yep. He even said on the first seal, he said, I'd have made a horrible mistake today <laughs> if the Holy Spirit hadn't straightened me out on something I was fixing to say. Read the first seal and see. But that's where people won't do it. They won't go read to see what the prophet said. But then they'll just turn around and say, I don't believe you. Don't believe what? You don't even know what your story is. At least get down and read the book. Then it might give a better understanding. Hmm? Let's read this. Now there's three times so go to Revelation 1. There's three times in the book of Revelation that an angel appears to John. Now, are you going to make that three different angels? That's your choice. There's three times in the book of Revelation, one of them is Revelation 1, that an angel appears to John. All right. Now let's just, let's just take them out of the way it's go along, and then maybe when we get to the end of it, we'll have a better understanding. Revelations 1. Uh, verse 10, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a great voice of a trumpet saying, and what did the voice say? Look, it's a red letter saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in the book, and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto... Tyra unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, and under Lady of Seal. And what? And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And he turns to see the voice. He sees seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the pouch with a golden girdle. Now I've done preached to you over and over who that is, that Brother Ray says it. That's the bride of Jesus Christ. Because girt about the pouch is finished. That's God because it's like another son of man. It didn't say the son of man. Right. Well, like another son of man. Go read. His head and his hair was white like wool. It's white as snow, and his eyes were a flame of fire, and his feet like a defined brace. 
as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters, Brother Brown says, many preachers, witnesses, page 57, Church Age Book. He had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Yeah. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me. Now look, you, do you have a red letter edition of the Bible? A red letter edition means Jesus is speaking. Does, does everybody understand that one? God is speaking. Right? Yeah. So who's this talking now? The one he falls at his feet says, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And how the keys of hell and death. So we know for certain that wouldn't brother Brown. Right? right? I mean, that solves that problem, but number one. Okay. Let's see. Go to go ahead and go with number eight. Which is Revelation of Jesus Christ, Church Age Book, page 13. So we'll get this one out of the way and then we can go on to our thought. This book is usually termed the Revelation of St. John. Now the, par the paragraph above this one is where Brother Brown says John was not a, an, uh, the author of the book of Revelation. He's a scribe. It's the paragraph above this if you want to read it. Go get your Church Age book. This book is usually termed the Revelation of St. John. But that is incorrect. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ given to John for the Christians of all ages. It is the only book in the entire Bible that is written by Jesus himself through personally appearing to a scribe. Uh -huh. That ought to be enough. Right. He didn't say Jesus. He's Jesus Christ. Jesus himself written. He's talking about not just a flesh man. Going down to the next one. Number 9, paragraph 110 to 7, church ages 54, 5, 12. And then he looked upon Jesus and had seven rainbows above him. He was in which, which was God's covenant. And he was standing in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. He was to look upon his jasper and sardis stone. Jasper was Reuben and sardis stone was the Benjamin. That was the first and the last of the patriarchs. That alpha and omega, the beginning and the ending. And there were seven rainbow colors, seven church ages, the covenant with him and his and the seven golden candlesticks with the seven stars. Oh, what a picture. If we get to it after a while, maybe the Lord willing. All right. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and saith the Lord, which, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. Who is He? What's this revelation of? Jesus Christ. And here He's not a prophet. Here He is the Almighty God manifested the Alpha and Omega. I am A from A to Z. I am He that was, which is, and shall come. I am the Almighty. Pretty clear, isn't it? No chance of controversy there. Lord, which was, which is. So then we know for certain Revelations 1. Yep. Couldn't have been Brother Branham. It was God Himself. Right. Let's say in bride form. Right. All right. Atmos Vision, 60, 1960-1204, paragraph 257. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet dead. My, the prophet couldn't stand no more. See, such a vision. He just, he just snapped his strength, and he fell right down on his feet as dead. Now watch. And they laid his right hand upon him, saying unto, the right hand upon me, saying, uh, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Oh my, not a prophet, God. See? It's not a prophet, this is God. I am the first and the last. I'm the first of the resurrection, and the last of the resurrection. I am he that was and he that is and that will come. Alright. Now. So we'll take that one out of the way. See, we'll pull that one apart. Set it aside. If that was not Brother Branham, that was God. Okay? Jump over now in Revelations, the second time this is used is Revelations 19. Revelations 19. I don't know that. They won't get these up. Right. Revelations 19. We'll start reading from verse 5. The voice came out of the throne. Now watch. 
And the voice came out of the throne. Where's the voice coming from? Out of the throne. Right? Say, pray to our God, all you saints, and all, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And they heard it where's the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, Now who would? This would have come out of the throne. And he saith unto me, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. He saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said, On oh, see thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Alright. So now, that doesn't list us to be in Brother Brown. That lists the testimony of Jesus Christ, as I was saying a while ago. All the prophets and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Right. You agree? Yep. Every prophet, Moses, Elijah, John, whatever, you know. Yep. All the prophets that were back there. Michael, I one of that that was the spirit of prophecy. It was not the man. Right. My brother Brown said about Isaiah. Isaiah said a virgin shall conceive. He said, Now ain't that an odd thing for a man to say? Right. No. I mean, let me go a little further. Don't you think Isaiah probably went home? Said, but I goofed up. How can a virgin conceive? Yeah. But see, what he said was true. Right. And it had to come to pass. Because right. it was the spirit of prophecy. Right. Something he had prophesied. Now, Brother Gary and I were talking about this the other day. See, as long as you and I keep prophesying, we're going to die. I preached a sermon one time many years ago, and I preached it, and honestly, I believe it. Those who prophesy must die. Show me one in the Bible that prophesied it didn't die. Right. Now, you can say, well, the Lord Jesus, come on, after Almighty God, don't, don't talk to me like that. No. Let's don't get on them kind of flings. I'm talking about in the prophets or in the people. You know that Paul said, you be changed a moment in the twinkle of an eye. I've always told you, I believe when Paul seen that, he's seen it just as perfect that it will be the day that it takes place to you and me. Hallelujah. But he couldn't make it manifest. Right. There was no way to bring it in that time. It wasn't time. So it was a prophecy. But what he saw was the real thing. Right. Brother Brown never come and got something different. He got it from Paul. When Naaman saw Charis Johnson in the street, he saw Buicks and Oldsmobiles running together in our day, out on the highway, running like lightning with, you know, headlights on. Yep. You know what? He saw it. Because they could be taken over and see those things. Right. Because that was the spirit of prophecy. All right? Now, so we know that the first time Chapter 1 and chapter 19 would not clarify enough to bring it to make it to be anything that Brother Brown was speaking of. So now let's go over here and let's read this Revelations 22 and we'll finish with this part. And I'm going to say it again. If you believe Brother Brown to be that, that's fine. I'm not going to argue with you. But just take into consideration the things that we spoke of. It should have been sensible enough of what we stated that there would be no way you could bring the human body, corporal, human, right. physical body right. of Brother Branham over to John on Patmos. Irregardless if you want to believe that was Brother Branham to come to John. You can't bring the body there. That's pre-existence. You're, you're getting it too far. So you're going to have to back up away from the human mortal and back up into at least it had to be in some other form 
and, and see, like I said, they believe it was a theophany form that come across. Well, that that's all right, but just remember now, and I know this is going to go contrary to what, and we'll get to that doctrine eventually, that most people think your theophany is off up in heaven somewhere. Mm -hmm. Come on, brother. Brother Random says your soul is your theology. Amen. Right. Amen. Okay. We get back to that one. Don't have time tonight. We get back to that one eventually and talk on it. See? So then if you're dealing with those type of things, but let's just read Revelation 22 and just read and see what it actually says. All right. And see, then we'll see that I'm not trying to tear down what Brother Random is saying. You can go ahead and pull it up if you want to, brother. Go to Revelation 22. Oh, they're doing good, man. So watch now. I'll read from here because I want to stop and emphasize. Because these have been underlined for 40 years. So, you know, I didn't make no new ones for this message. And he showed me a pure river of water of life clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Now, who showed it to him? Somebody. Right. Right. Showed this to John. Right. Okay. You can back up over in another chapter, pick up and see that it was an angel. It's all right. Now watch. In the midst of the street, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month and the leaves of the tree was for the healing of the nations there shall be no more curse but the throne of God and the lamb shall be in it and his servants shall serve him and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads and there shall be no night there Amen. and they need no candle neither light of them sun Amen. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he saith unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. Now remember, Revelation 21 is the future home. So this is on past. Okay? The future home is Revelation 21. This is showing what's going to be in Revelation 21. <laughs> be no night there. Why? The Lord God reigneth. And he saith unto me, These things are faithful and true, and the Lord, the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel unto his servants, excuse me, and sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Now who's that? Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Okay. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren the prophets and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Now, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall he shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Now, which one said that? According to your red letter point, the Lord Jesus was the main one speaking. Come on. First and the last, blessed are they 
that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and adulterers and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. I like that other one. And the spirit and the bride say come. Now, you say what Brother Branham said, that that was a prophet. Maybe Elijah or one of the prophets. All right. We go back to step one. Was it the person of Brother Branham that came to John on Patmos? <coughs> or was it the prophet of God which came to John? Amen. So you can't separate here in the readings the angel from the God who spake. Try it. So it must be the prophet of the entire Bible. I believe that's who came to John on Patmos. Amen. Amen. The prophet. Amen. Of the entire Bible, which would make all of the prophets standing in one finality. to reveal because this man would be the one to reveal the next man that's coming number five he's going to Israel right. he's going to take this message right Amen. the two prophets take this message to Israel right, right? Yep. and they tell Israel about who we are and what we've done See, if we make it the prophet, which is all the prophets together, then we can see that the Lord Jesus Christ is the prophet, the form of God. Right. Just as the Logos was the form of God. Yep. Just as the Son of God was the form of God. Yep. Well, see, I'm not a Trinitarian, but neither am I a oneness. <laughs> I would to God one day I could ever get together enough to really preach what took place in in, in Genesis. Because you see, I don't have any trouble whatsoever seeing Jesus Christ standing on earth speaking to His Father. And not that He's talking to the one inside of Him. That's what everybody thinks. But Brother Brown said, you got the Holy Ghost in you. I said, who do you talk to? Well, I just whisper back inside of me. I'm going to have to, no, no, I pray to my Father which is in heaven. Don't you? Jesus prayed to His Father that was in heaven. That form of God standing on earth was so much man that it could weep. But it was so much God it could raise the dead. That was God in another form. God the Son. I believe the one that came to, to John on Patmos was all the prophets together in one prophet. If you want to make that brother around, you go ahead and do what you want to. I believe not that Brother Branham was to be introduced to the bride. Right. That's it. Come on, I just wrote down some things I believe here to him. I don't believe that Brother Branham came to introduce himself to the bride. He came to introduce Jesus Christ to the bride. Right? right? Which is the Word. Alright. See, we argue of who it was that came to John. Instead of thinking about what the man brought. Whoever it was. Whoever you think come to John on Patmos, 
It's not important who came. It's important what he brought. Right. But remember there, he only brought the writing of the Word. <coughs> right. Come on. So you better connect it to the end time where this prophet could come and go in the Word right. and not just be who went to John, but who went to all the prophets. It would come out of there with the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. And introduce Christ. I don't believe we need to be concerned who came to brother. I believe, listen, I believe we need to be concerned of who came to brother Branham and not of who brother Branham came to. But see, the emphasis seems to be put on who came to John. Well, you're just in the writing of the book. What about this? Who is the prophet? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. I thought, that's my last thought. I thought the Bible was the revelation of Jesus Christ. Right, right. Not the revelation of just one prophet. Come on. But the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. Now may I state again so that maybe it'll collect on you. Elijah. Elisha. John the Baptist. Brother Branham. The prophet going to Israel. The five times of the coming of Elijah. And neither one of them even if you're to ask Elijah, Elijah, are you the full total fulfillment of Elijah? He would have said, I don't understand why I'm going to say this, but I can't be all of it. Because that's what Elijah said in, in John the Baptist. No, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. See, it's not important who came to John. It's important the message that is brought to you and I in this end time about this whole book. Right. Yeah. Then if that was Brother Brown, amen. But I still say he represented all the prophets. Amen. Anyhow you'd want to think about it. I believe it was the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe Revelation 22, when it turned to the red letter part, that that's the one that come to John. It was the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you read Revelation 22, it turned to the red letter, showing that that was the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. The Lord Jesus Christ said, I sent my angel. Sure he did. He sent us a church age messenger that was not only a church age messenger, but a prophet. Amen. So that he could reveal the entire Bible to this man. That this man didn't have to take it to John. Right. That's no concern who took it to John. It's the concern is what he took to John to be able to be brought to you and I to where God can reveal it. Right. That's right. And you take this prophet's message, that's why that I say when I'm coming along reading a lot of time, I just come down through there reading and you see all the writing that's on there. I don't write in my Bible, well I do in mine because I write down what Brother Branham said. I got it written right there in Revelations 1 where it said this is not a prophet, this is God. See, because I want to know about who God is, don't you? Thank God for the prophet. Thank God for all the prophets. Thank God for the revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. John is not the author of the book of Revelations. 
John is the scribe. Right. Eli uh, let's see, Isaiah. Let me put it this way in my own words, okay? Isaiah was not the author of the book of Isaiah. Right. He was the scribe to write what the real author was telling him. That's why David could stand forth and say, they pierced my hands and my feet. He could say, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit down on my right hand while I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Ethiopian eunuch, wasn't that the one is either, either no, it was, it was went down that Philip I reckon was talking to. And he said, Is this man talking about himself or another? Because he could read there and it sounded just like the man was talking about himself. Those prophets were so engulfed until David was probably even in his mentality feeling the beatings that the Lord Jesus was receiving because he by spirit entered their end. Yep. You see, I don't have any problems with anybody. I'm just what I say because it's what I believe. My emphasis is upon what was brought right. to you and I by the prophet of this last day. Yeah. If you give any more emphasis than that, I'd like to know it. Let's say right. It's not what I've got to say or what you've got to say. And listen, the prophet brought what God had to say, but here's the main thing. The Bible said he that heard what the Spirit had to say. That was to each church age. The main emphasis is whether the Holy Spirit in you that we were talking about the evidence the other day of whether or not it can keep on agreeing with the Word. Right. <coughs> Think on these things. What do we got? 120 in the Red Book. Come unto to me. Anybody have a need? Hear the blessed Savior calling me a friend. some of the things seemingly the prophet was teaching. I said, okay. No problem. But my heart's clear. I brought what I thought and what I believe. Amen. And that way my heart is clear. 
I don't have to worry then. So don't think you say, well, now be careful. I always try to be real careful. The way I word things, the way I say it. Because that way, it's not that I try to compromise. It's just I try to tell the truth. If you believe that was Brother Branham that come to John on Baptist, anybody out there listening, are you here? That's your business. All I still want to know is what Brother Branham brought to you and I. Wherever it come from or whoever got it, that's all I want to know. And I do know that that was only the writing of the book that everybody's emphasis upon. John, if you say Brother Branham come to John, well then he was coming to John to tell him what to write. He wouldn't come in to tell him what it was to reveal it. That would be in this day. Amen. Right. See, think on these things. It's very serious in this hour that we're living. But that's the way I think about every message. Every message I've ever preached, I try to preach it with the honesty and sincerity of my heart. To believe and try to show you every side of it, different ways, whatever, what people think, but then conclude with telling you what I believe. See, if there's any problem with that, then the Lord knows my heart's right. So think about it. Stumbling on the. Stumbling on.